when this goes at a top speed, especially in the dark, the, the words disappear. Mm. And so what you have is the idea of what I call from logos to light, which logos in Greek means word, yes, yeah. uh, some from word to light. Nice. These are five words from The Naked Lunch, so oh. William Burroughs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I took five, because when I first made the poem machines in the 60s, I knew him, and he, he came to the first show I had mm -hmm. and wanted me to use some of his words. How did you choose which words? Well, I read Naked Lunch a couple of times and decided on five words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the criteria was I didn't, I wanted words that would work on their own. And I, I didn't, I wanted them to be quite neutral. So I didn't want them to be sentimental, romantic, pornographic, erotic. Mm -hmm. I just wanted them to, to say something pretty neutral. And this does, it can be interpreted in many ways. Yeah. Although it was part of a very erotic uh, passage in the book. Right. And these are nested cylinders. So e e there are three cylinders, one inside the other. Yes. They're moving in opposite directions and at different speeds, mm. so, um, which actually separates them so that it's easier to read them. Okay. Um, but uh, the, I, th I see them just as pages. Yeah. So that instead of reading a page by turning it, what you're doing is reading into the center. So you start from the outside and then you read into the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what I'm interested in I mean, there are a number of things that I'm interested in, but one of them uh, is the way the brain focuses. That's what interests me. The way, the way your, your brain will, will basically defocus from the top one, focus into the middle one, and then focus it to the back, yeah. uh, either on command, like consciously, or even unconsciously. So these pieces, which I call, I, I mean, they have different names. I mean, these are called power lines, these two. Mm -hmm. These two I made in the 80s. So there was, they were made in 83. But for example, these were made at the end of the 70s. Uh, and I started making these column pieces in probably 65, 66. It, 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 I mean, there are just so many var variations that I've done. I mean, I've, done horizontal and vertical mm -hmm. and made them very, very fine like these so that the, I mean, if you see them, you have to look at them uh, like this, you see, on where the light's coming from. But the, 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 the intention is the, is the line of light on the mm -hmm. surface. And the lines of light, basically, uh, interest me for a number of reasons. I mean, they kind of talk, you know, and, and they talk about the form. Yeah. So the, you've got basically, what it's talking about is telling you all the different changes that I've made to the surface of the piece. See? And those changes that you see, you see them in four dimensions. And not only time, but the relationship between time and space. Mm -hmm. It's that integral relationship that I feel is important. Uh, you know, I've spoken to a physicist about it and he he did agree that it was, in a sense, a visualization of four-dimensional space-time. Because if you look at the, the line, you'll see that along certain, I don't know if you see it as well in there, because that's so fine. Mm. But for example, these, you can see that some of the, 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 the that they're like different movements on, on, the, on, the, on the same line, and some of them look faster than others, you see? But the, the actual motor that's turning, it's always turning it at the same speed. They're koans, they're, yeah. they're called koans. Because they're not lines, they're planes. Mm. You can see it in this one. You see where you see right the way through it and there's no light inside, because yeah. that's solid perspex. So the plane is a solid perspex sheet that basically goes right the way through. So what we have to do is cut it all up, cut the cone up and then cut the sections mm. precisely, and then put it together again. But the minute you cut it up, though, these, particularly, you know, these, these sections, you see these really thin ones, yeah. they just distort. <laughs> and, and to get back the shape is extremely difficult. So, you know, you have to actually, and also to put them, they have to be precisely put together, because even the slight millimeter 
much, mm -hmm. you know, shift, they'll be crooked. The cones are fiberglass and they're very, quite thin. The uh, planes are made out of perspex, yeah. And how, where does the light come from? The light's in the center. Okay, yeah, so, so how do you get the different colored light on these? Because the, the materials are different colors. Okay. See, the, the, right. those are, in fact, those are the three fluorescent colors you can get in perspex. Mm -hmm. So that's why my, my, my spectrum of color is rather limited. <laughs> Because if, if, I, if I use any other color, it'll be dull. The only colors that are luminesce are these fluorescent colors. Yeah. So, I mean, this piece is called In the Valley of Darkness. And uh, I made it in uh, 1975, I think. Uh, 75, yeah. And it's made out of optical glass prisms and uh, steel. It's basically five figures, but I've, I've worked with prisms for a very long time, and at, at a certain point I, I felt that prisms really were heads, you know, it, because they were like, like minds, you know, because they transform, because they see and then they transform what they see. Uh, and, and they're basically tools for seeing. You know, so I, I felt that they were always the head, and they had this kind of. Uh, for me, they just had you know all the different shapes that you could get had a kind of extraordinary figurative quality. You know, so um, in a way, they became like totemic for me, mm. and uh, I started making firstly very small pieces, and then larger pieces which were in cases. They were always in cases uh, because because prisms are fragile. And then also because I, th I felt that they were other, you know, that their, their relationship to my world was a relationship that was separated uh, by their otherness. And they became about, um, I made a whole series which was about uh, rites of passage, mm -hmm. passage from birth to life, from life to death, this sort of thing. Basically, one of the things I found that this, the prisms didn't need to be very large uh, because they're, they're basically conductors of light. Mm -hmm. So something that's a conductor of light is in a sense a very, if you think of it in a spiritual sense, it's, it's something spiritual, it's something high. Uh, so um, I thought, I realized that you didn't need a great deal of spirit or of light in order to illuminate, you see? And that was something, to me, seemed an important realization. Uh, and, and so I realized I could make these much larger. Mm -hmm. and, th and then I started making full-size ones. And then from the full-size ones, I started making um, actually larger than life, and they became archetypes. Right. right. And, and f so these were sort of a mix of drama because in a sense, the minute you put five figures together, you're enacting a drama. You know, there's, there's something going on between them. And, and then pieces like uh, the, the two pieces there, a conjunction of opposites, which I made in the late 80s, uh, well, throughout the 80s, 83 to 86, um, they are drama, they're a six minute drama. So they perform and they interact with each other. And they use sound and light uh, and interconnect the sound with the light um, and movement. They're made out of aerogel. And aerogel is silicon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's like a microscopic web. There's more air than there is matter, 98% air. That's why it's so transparent. So if you walk around it, it changes color. Well, even in the daylight? Yeah, even in the daylight. Uh, because it depends on how the light, if the light is going through it, you see it one color. If the light is reflecting off of it, mm -hmm. you see it another color. Mm -hmm. Then I project video onto these images. Uh, I project video of uh, places on Earth, you know, just travel video. Uh, because w I wanted to parallel what the scientists were doing. And the scientists basically, what they're doing with this now is to collect stardust, to collect dust from outer space. Okay. So 
they do that in order to examine this dust, uh, which is, they hope, uncontaminated, you see, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's in there. And because it's in there, it, you know, as long as the spacecraft doesn't land in the desert and crash and all that, which it did the first time. Uh, but they did it twice. And uh, the second time was fine. And anyway, so they get this, this, these tiny, tiny particles, which they have to find um, in there. They, they extract them. And then they, they, uh, they, obs they observe them, right? They, so they, when they look at them under an electron microscope, they can identify what materials are in those stars. Okay, wow. You see? So have your pieces got stardust in? Mm? Have your pieces got stardust in? Well, uh, there's stardust everywhere. Okay. <laughs> it isn't the question of whether the stardust is there or not. It's whether you can separate it from everything else. No, the question is basically, did these go to outer space? The answer no. is no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but the way I look at it, this is outer space, right? Yeah. And so if this is outer space, if I project images, data of this world mm. onto these, then we are looking at data from, uh, outer, from space. outer space. <laughs> and, and so that's what I do. And what this does to it is extraordinary. It dissolves it. So that you, when, you, when you project sort of really common images, like an image of a restaurant or people or temple, uh, you don't see it at all. All you see is color and light, wow. light, color, and movement. That's you know, it's a sort of you know, your light show, <laughs> if you like. Um, and it's very complex light show, but it's all really, all the information's there. It's just that this won't reflect it all. So you can't see it. <laughs>